briefly mentioned this in a tour of the lab, but I wanted to go into it a, a little bit more with you. Um, I went out and had a look at some coal heaps, because we have quite a mining industry here in Kent. It surprised me, I didn't expect there to be one. I come from Yorkshire, and there's a lot of mining in Yorkshire, but I didn't expect there to be any in Kent, and yet there is. So there's quite a few spoil heaps lying around Kent that you can wonder over and explore, and I had an explorer of them and picked up some of this. This I just picked from the ground. Now it's obviously waste coal. There's some lovely stuff which is very coaly, like that one there. Then there's this uh, rather gritty stuff, which is obviously a mix of some kind of dust. We don't really know what. Then there's this kind of shale, which is a carboniferous shale. But basically, all of the junk that they dug out of the mine and put in a big heap beside the mine because they didn't know what to do with it. Now, we've been mining in England for hundreds of years, so some of these heaps are massive. They're really, really huge. They're hundreds of feet tall, and they're thousands of cubic metres of this stuff. Just lying around. It's, it's a waste product. It's a waste product from the mine. And the other thing about coal, obviously, is it's a dying industry. Nobody really wants coal to burn because it throws a lot of CO2 into the air and everybody thinks it's dirty and it's a dangerous business. So mining coal is becoming a dying industry and there's a lot of waste from the previous mining lying around. And I was thinking, what could we do about that? Is there anything we could do about that? Now, although nobody wants coal, nobody wants graphite. Graphite is one of the key products, one of the key commodities needed for the production of lithium-ion batteries. They need a certain kind of graphite, it's called spherifilized graphite, and they need it by the ton. Now, if it were possible to take some of this stuff, which is spoily, and turn it into graphite that could be used in lithium batteries, we'd be on a real winner. And so I decided to have a look at that, to see if I could take spoil heat coal and turn it into a graphite product. And that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to go through that process of how to go around turning this junk into something everybody wants. Now this stuff, you don't need to mine it particularly, it literally is a waste product. There are mountains of it in England, and I'm sure there's a whole lot of it in the US. I'm sure there's a lot in Poland, Czech Republic, Australia, absolutely all over the world has coal mining spoil heaps. Of course, they still have the coal mines, and there's some good quality coal in there, but no real use for it. So if we want to see if we can turn this rubbish coal into graphite, we also need to see if we can turn the good coal into graphite. The, ben the preference would be the rubbish coal, because we don't have to do any more mining, we just dig out these hills that we've pretty chucked up and use that material. If we can't, then there's a possibility that the good coal can suddenly become a useful product. And all those mining industries that are rely on coal and have, have died, really, and all, and all of those communities that have died, have that possibility of taking this material and turning it into a product that everybody wants. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So I hope you enjoy watching. Please watch to the end. So I'm from Yorkshire. And the interesting thing about Yorkshire is you can't throw a stick and you don't hit a coal mine. The place is full of coal mines. Now, when I moved to Kent, I kind of didn't expect there to be any coal mines. But surprisingly enough, there's quite an active industry of coal mining in Kent. So what we've done is we've come out to a better's hangar and this is the Foulmead Country Park. This used to be a coal mine, it was a coal head. And for all those years that it dug the coal out, of course they couldn't use all of it, most of it ended up in a big pile and they made a hill out of it. And outside every coal mine, you'll find an enormous pile, the spoil heap. And these things are just absolutely everywhere. Now it occurred to us that there's a, a limit to how many mining museums and country parks you can make out of all the spoil heaps there are in Britain. And it also occurred to us that there were spoil heaps in Britain, in Poland, in the Czech Republic, in Australia, in America, just about everywhere has a massive pile of coal spoil. Now we have a plan for that, but first of all I want to show you what that spoil looks like once you start to look at it underneath the grass. So here's an example of a small section. We're going to show you a larger section shortly, but you can see what a spoil heap is like. On the top bit there, we've got basically where the grass has grown or they've chucked a bit of soil and put some plants. And the whole spoil heap is like this. It's just this big pile of muck. Now, if you have a look at this, you can see it's a mixture. So there's a whole lot of shales just here, you can see. Then there's a whole lot of this crumbly, friable stuff. But if you have a look at some of these things, like this one, for instance, 
that's just a spit of low-grade coal, uh, coal. So this spoil heap is made out of a mixture of this kind of low-grade coal up to this really nice grade here. So there's a whole range of coals in this heap, a whole range of muck that's just fallen down, and then quite a lot of mud shales in this particular one. It would depend where the coal was mined. So in Yorkshire, we get a lot of um, ironstone. It's called the Tankley Ridge. So we get an awful lot more ironstone there. So we'd still get this spoil that we'd be looking at and that we'd be interested in. Now this spoil is the stuff that we're gonna collect a sample of. But I wanna show you what a bigger heap looks like because this is just one slice. So behind me, you can see the spoil heap as it's been exposed because of the building works and it's massive. I mean, most of this part of Kent is pretty flat. So this big hill is the result of about a hundred years of chucking spoil on this heap. There are megatons of this material beneath my feet. So we've just been walking around and we've come across this heap here. It's quite shaly and there's some carbon in there that we can see. Now we're just going to take a random sample because this is what we're going to take back to the lab and process. So we'll just grab a little bit of that, put it in a plastic bag and get it back to the lab. Okay, we're back from our field trip and here's our randomly picked sample of the spoil heap. Uh, and it's a bit damp because we just pulled it off the spoil heap. So the first thing to do is to dry it. And we'll give it a couple of hours in the vacuum oven and that should dry that out nicely. Now obviously we're quite lucky in that we've got a vacuum oven. So we set that to 80 degrees and we'll give that a couple of hours and that should dry that out nicely. Okay, so it was all pretty exciting yesterday because I started the experiment and I came in this morning, and, and this is the first thing in the morning, actually it's half past seven, um, <laughs> to see the results of the experiment. So we left it, we were drying the mix, as you remember. We took that sample that we got from the spoil heap and we dried it. Now, one of the problems with graphitization of something like coal is, is the cleaning it up afterwards. And one of the things about the process we're using is that it doesn't really uh, leave any metallic particles or little bits as part of the process. But there is an issue cleaning it. Uh, so what I did was sift the stuff. So this is after it's gone through the sifter. This is the material left from our sample once we've sifted it. And that separates into smaller particles and these much larger particles because after our process what we can do is separate these larger particles out that much more easily. So I came in this morning and separated it out and here is one that has not been processed and you can see it's a kind of shaly, muddy looking colour, sort of a grey colour. And here is one that has been processed. I'm not sure how clear that's coming up but that's much bluer. So, if we've done something to it, we're not 100% sure what we've done to it, we've certainly done something to it. Now, we haven't done any characterization as of yet, but we can have a quick look at some functional testing to see if we've done anything of significance to that. So if I take a resistive reading of that lump of basically coal and clay, then actually uh, it won't read. It, it's, it's off the scale in mega-ohm terms. And that's because that's really just a mix of coal and, and clay, coal and mud. It, it's a coal impregnated shale. So it's not going to give any readings. There's nothing we can do about that. There's no conductivity. It's using um, a lump of mud. So when I pick a bit of this stuff out, however, and take a reading of that. <laughs> that is awesome. Absolutely awesome. So it goes from no reading whatsoever to that. Now that's reading kilo ohms. So it's 0.6 of a kilo ohm. Now you've got to ask yourself, what the hell have we done? <laughs> Put no metals in here. So the responsibility of that conductivity cannot be down to the metals. It might be down to some kind of change of the uh, mud that's in there. We might get metals out of the mud, I suppose. Uh, sort of a reduction. Because there's certainly nothing in there. That red, remember, in it felt so high you couldn't read it. In here, we're getting such a low reading. So there's only a couple of options. Now, one of them could be the carbon content on it here has been changed from an amorphous carbon to a graphitic carbon. That would certainly explain that's going on. So, we have highly likely graphitized the carbon in there. As I said, the other thing might be that the mud constituents have been reduced to give the metallic particle. We're not 100% sure. 
We do know that we've changed the absolute non-conductive shale, uh, coal shale, into this very conductive material. What we need to do is send that off for characterization. But it is awesome. I mean, we've, we've just been able to take mud off the ground and change it into a conductive carbon. Now, we think it's graphite. It looks graphitic. We do need to have it characterized. But the obvious things to do with this are to take a lump of pure coal, and here's a nice lump of pure coal, get some of this pure coal and put it through the same process and see what happens. That way, we can know whether we're absolutely doing it or not. And I suspect we are, because obviously this is not my first test. Obviously I've been doing these a number of times before I did the video for you. But our next step is to take some of this pure coal and put it through our process and see if we graphitize it. But we do know that we can take the spoil and turn it into something that is graphitic. Now this is not brilliant graphite, but it's not bad graphite actually. Um, there is a known industrial process where we can float the graphite off this. So remember, this is just the spoil. Now, the significance of this is that we are touching on the coal industry. The coal industry is a dying industry. Uh, it's big problems. There's only coal mines with some beautiful, beautiful high-grade coal that they're digging out and nothing to do with it. Now, coal is really cheap. It's about $40 a tonne, something like that. If we can turn it into graphite, and particularly spherical graphite, we can raise the value of that to something like $20,000 a ton. The first step is to get a nice method that leaves no impurities to do that graphitization. And we think we've got that. We're certainly going to continue with it because it's looking extremely promising indeed. We're able to do the rubbish into graphite. Let's have a look what we can do with the pure coal into graphite. Now we can do that, and we've got this easy separation technique that we're looking at, and we're getting nice pure graphite out of it, then we have got a process here for taking something that nobody wants into something that everybody wants. Because remember, half of a battery, half of a lithium-ion battery, is graphite. Everybody wants graphite. When you think about what Tesla is doing with his Gigafactory, he's going to need tons of graphite, and at the moment, He's got to buy them from only a few sources. This technique means that he can buy them from any source, including the coal mines in Pennsylvania. So we could take all of those communities that have a product that nobody wants and turn it into a product that everybody wants in-house, in America. And we could do the same thing here in the UK. We could turn it, a product that nobody wants into something within the UK that everybody would want. So we're really excited by what we've done so far. It's looking very, very promising. Steps forward are obviously going to be characterization, find out exactly what we've got. Repeat the process, but with pure coal, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I've got some samples of coal coming from known mine locations, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. And then we can characterize that. Then we have a process that basically, I think, will save the coal industry. Anyway, I hope that was of interest to you, and thank you very much for watching.